inside our bodies are literally other dimensions. Right now, we could be inside a person's body, and we wouldn't know. We have a very limited scope because the way that we're making sense out of this universe, even parallel dimensions included, is through the media. You know, like Donnie Darko and Men in Black. And so when we really think about it, what we think we know about the world, even when it comes to source consciousness and all the beliefs throughout the religions, it's all within a box. What we're doing impacts everyone on such a large scale that we're not even aware of it. How many interactions do we have as human beings per day? I think about a month. I have this belief, just through logic, that you've already changed the world. That both of us, we're doing one little thing, and we're constantly doing it, but we've already, at this time, within our lives, have impacted everyone on this planet just by waving at someone or by saying something. Right, so let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So you went really deep down into the world of astral projection. Um, and the, a question I really wanted to start us off and ask you was, do you think it's important for people to sort of, to create a habit around exploring their own consciousness? Yes, it definitely is, because I think it, it's really good for a person to understand how their mind works. Um, I honestly believe it's one of the first things that should be taught in schools, you know, how your mind works yeah. before you figure out how to make money or even math. You know, it's just, it's best. Otherwise you'll run into a whole bunch of mental problems if you don't know what's going on up here, which a lot of people get after a while. You know, it's confusion, essentially. Yeah. How do you think people can start forming that habit within themselves? Well, they need to want to. A lot of people don't want to look inside their mind. Um, and, you know, that sounds very... Scary. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Sometimes... Well, I, I just imagine that people would think, they, oh yeah, wh whatever, you know, like, not really pay any energy, not really put any energy into even reacting to that type of claim. But if you, if you push them into a corner, it's completely different. Yeah, scary. They freak out. Like, no, I don't want to go in my mind. And uh, some people, they don't even realize how bad it is in there until they take something like ayahuasca or a psychedelic that shows them their imagination. Then it's like, oh, and they freak out. That's what sometimes I feel about, you know, the... When you get that sense of resistance, you know, when you know, you know the sense of resistance you get it around if you're around your close friends and you sort of try and induce, uh, uh, sort of suggest a new sort of technique to try in meditation, or even just to actually not even a technique, just to even suggest them to do meditation. You get that sense of the sort of where they're just trying to say, no, 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 that's not for me. I mean, that's a sort of a for me, that's a sense of them to sort of a, a bit of fear because I think once you once they know that they open that door in the mind, that's when the work begins. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have you, do you find that for yourself when, is that, is that what happened for you in your journey when you st sort of started looking at the, the world of astral projection and lucid dream and all these other topics that you're looking to, did that open a, a door in your mind sort of see it to be more introspective? It gave me the opportunity to, I mean, it, it basically set up a scenario at which where I was astral projecting mm. and I went to what they call the etheric realm, which is where the most, for the most part, most of your thoughts are going to manifest and uh, I realized that a lot of my thoughts would manifest I'd watch a lot of horror movies and so I noticed that I couldn't change my environment around me I was used to that with lucid dreaming so I, I knew I was in a different place but there was an extent as to how much of my mind was projected and uh, they call it the inner demons literally manifest and then uh, when, when I came back home, I was like, I want to make this like a thing. I want to constantly astral yeah. project. <laughs> so I can't always be afraid of my shadow or the fear or something like that. And so uh, I, I dove into psychology, like my mind. And to this day, the majority of what I teach is coming from me inside my head. <laughs> yeah. So observing little things. Yeah, it's, it's very important. It's very important for a lot of people to get a handle on how they're thinking. Yeah. What? So what? So I really wanted to dive deep in the world of astral projection. What do you think is actually happening when someone has an astral projection and, and they leave the body? What do you think is going on there? Oh man, depends how you. Depends <laughs> on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Some people 
Um, yeah, really, I mean, because it really does depend on where your headspace is at. If you've taken a whole bunch of psychedelics, then you're probably under the predisposition that we're in a simulation. And so everything is just consciousness beaming through something like a, a body, our body. And we're observing consciousness manifest. So it's kind of like you're walking, you're a walking projection. It's coming in through the back and in the front, and there's really nothing outside the projection. And if that's the belief system that you subscribe to, then that means the astral projection is also the same thing. Life after death is also the same thing. It's all just a projection of consciousness beaming in front of us based on what we think should be there and based on what the universal laws are. Um, that, I, I subscribe to that, yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that's the same thing as basically saying that after you die, you go to another place. It's just, you're taking it a little bit further. And like, what is that place made out of? What are these dimensions made out of? You know, what is the I am really experiencing? When, when you are in these realms of astral projection, do you, is it, is it, for, is it like sort of thought based? Mm, yeah, everything is thought. Every, at the base of everything, it's consciousness. And in 3D, it's a little harder to notice that. But the further you get away from this thought based reality, the more you'll, you know, the more it become apparent that the other dimensions are reactive to your thoughts, which is like a key word. They're reactive to your thoughts. They're not made up of your thoughts. A lot of people think that it's all in your head and it's all your imagination, but they don't realize that that's a, that's a very, hmm, they're missing a lot of info there. They're misunderstanding a lot of what's happening because everything is your imagination. The tree is your imagination, you know? But uh, we wouldn't say that that tree is coming out of our head. And so when it comes to astral projection and the things that you see, if you look at it, everything as I am you and you are me, then yeah, the astral realms is coming from you. I wouldn't say it's coming from your head, but it's definitely coming from a part of you that's bigger than this individual kind of scope. And um, so I just want to put that out there because you can't create a dimension from your ordinary awareness. You can only create lucid dreams from your ordinary awareness, you know, like imaginary things. Yeah. And so, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, just to really on a point you said as well, so when you were talking about how the lucid dream realms are a f sort of a thought thought based, based reality do you think that this reality now is also a thought based reality as well you mean that cause and effect yeah yeah, yeah. that's this is good to mention that because i kind of forgot where i was going to go with that uh, so there are different laws based on this type of cause and effect principle uh, like in this reality if you think something and then you start speaking stuff happens um but for the most part the laws that we tie, that that we kind of go along with is the the law of action and doing things you know we're very like work busy we don't have to be like that here but that's just what we think we have to do so we do it a lot in other dimensions if you want to go somewhere the reality will listen to you and literally take you there it's like a giant navigational system so you don't have to imagine where you're going or anything like that um, the reality will do that so it's thought responsive it's not imaginative not unless you go into the etheric realm, which is a little darker. Um, it happen, you, people happen to get there, sundown. As soon as the sun goes down, it gets weird. Mm -hmm. And that's where the most, like the majority of your thoughts will come out as a projection of your imagination. But even then there is a side of the etheric realm, which is also thought responsive. So you ask it for something, it's gonna give you something. You put out the intention to see someone who's passed away, if they can get it, they'll show up or you'll disappear and show up where they are. So so the manifestation of the thoughts are much, are more, are quicker, sort of like, say if you're in the astral realm, you, you think of a thought, the uh, your reality sort of just, it just manifests straight away. But in this reality, the thoughts, you, with the manifestation of your own thoughts, it takes longer for that, longer for the then things to manifest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you, is that what you feel? Uh, I feel like the only reason why it takes people a long time here for the most part is because they're not aware of how to communicate with this dimension. Um, they, they want things and then and they sit there and you know, they believe that they're only supposed to do a certain series of things. But what if communicating to this reality was a little different 
to get it a, a quicker response you know and so yeah i think a lot of people aren't connected enough to this reality to get the speedy results and i think a lot of people don't know how to do it properly how could someone do that like you have to completely change your idea on how to attract things and you it's more of an internal job meaning i figured this out when i was when i was younger you know uh, I was looking and someone said this also I was looking at homeless people mm. and I was looking at rich people and I was looking at how much effort they both put into their selected roles that they choose for themselves they put in an equal amount of effort you know to get to get their reality a certain way and I was thinking well why is that like why is this person like this and why is the other person like that and I was like well it's because their mentality is what they believe and so based on their mentality they, they've created a character, an internal environment where they act a certain way, they have a certain attitude, they believe in specific things and they are willing or are not willing to do certain things. And so here's the thing, when your vibration changes, really it's your character that shifts because your character is a form of consciousness. It's your thoughts, people call it ego. And the more you can change how you feel the more your actions will change to, su to support the character you now believe you are. And so, for example, if I can convince you right now that you're a singer, you know, and a, and a, and a model, like on the spot, and every part of you believed in it, you would leave my house, you'd probably go to a store, buy something, and start getting in contact with fashion agents, and, and start writing music on the way there. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of days, well, actually, probably at the end of today, you'll have a song. You probably would have sung it because a lot of people can sing and they don't realize it. They block themselves because of uh, conditioning. Yeah. And you would have a hit single and probably be well on your way. I definitely would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say again? Yeah, I love that, by the way. And another question I want to ask you is, is with your experiences of astral projection, you went very deep in this realm. Do you... Do you think that I mean, what what sort of how how does how does that how does your understanding of astral projection inform your understanding of consciousness? It's bigger. Consciousness is bigger. Mm. Yeah, I used to think it was just inside the body, you know, but it's really not. And so it just changed my view on the scope of what we are, and. The reality of the fact that that's what's living you know, our body can function but for the most part you feel alive right now mm -hmm. but a, a large part of you have you, have you actually projected before i haven't no i don't think i have remember last time when we spoke i said about how i've had a lot of, i've had i've lucid i'm a very vivid lucid dreamer and I have a lot of lucid dreams yeah. and i was describing lucid dreams in the past to you and you spoke to me about how you said that maybe that's not you maybe that was an actual lucid dream so i don't know if i have i don't think i have so right now the amount of awareness that you're able to sense mm -hmm. that you're probably associating to being physically alive mm -hmm. is actually you feeling your consciousness and so when you pass on it will feel like you're still alive in that mm -hmm. sense and that's why a lot of people get confused like am i still alive like what's going on here they really don't know and um and so yeah it's it's changed my my view on i guess immortality in a sense the sense of living you have a sense that you never actually die you just pass or just shift through to a different reality well so when you said before about how you had a perception in the past where you said that you just believed that consciousness was just sort of with inside this body what i mean if you look around at the monday society now we know that i mean a lot of my friends if i said if i suggested to them that consciousness was a lot consciousness you you're not your body you're something larger people would straight away they would just laugh at you I mean, why do you think people don't can't come to terms with that? That there is something more than just this physical body. I think they're numb. Mm -hmm. They just can't feel anything. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you ever go outside and feel the wind on your face, and does it feel good still? Yeah. Cool. I wonder, at what age you know, does that stop being the case? because I've been doing a lot of emotional healing work recently over the past four months. And the more I deal with my emotions, the more receptive I am to reality. Mm. 
the more I'm able to notice the wind and these little pleasures of life. And it's literally like, you ever seen a kid who was playing with his toy and then all of a sudden got upset? And then the toy's not that fun anymore? Yeah. I, I wonder if people are, as they get older, because they're not dealing with their emotions, they're becoming more desensitized to life. I was out in the rain, like in a towel a couple of days ago, and I'm watching someone walk past me and they're in like a trench coat, they have thick glasses on, a huge like hat, and they're just miserable trying to get home. And I'm like, what's the difference between what I'm feeling right now and what they're feeling right now? You know, are they actually feeling everything that's happening right now? Because this feels pretty good. Yeah. But they seem so focused on how they were like brooding and yeah, she wasn't very happy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually had that thought the other day. I was speaking to my close friend about this, about, so, because you're, you're, obviously you're living in your body, I live in my body. Everyone listening to this podcast now lives within their bodies. And we don't ever really get to, I mean, you only, you only get to feel what your body feels like. No one else gets to feel what their, we don't get to feel what everyone else's body's like and the sensations that they're feeling. And I had the similar thing to you where, where the other day where I was, I was in the rain similar to you and I was actually, the, the sensations of the rain dripping down my body and stuff like that, it felt amazing and I was really sort of tuning in and tapping into sort of the marvel of it really, of what it feels like. I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think people on a general basis that don't get that feeling. I mean, I, I've questioned the same as you. I don't know if it's, I mean, so, so do you think that it's, is it down to that the more receptible, the more, the more you work on yourself internally and the more you open yourself up to this larger picture of reality, you feel that in this physical reality, we become, become more, it actually, it, it tunes the body in this physical reality to be more deceptible and more in tune with um, the sort of the subtleties of life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. powerful, that, by the way. Yeah. And I, I, love, I love nature. And before I was doing this work, I really thought I was in tune with nature. Nah. I was operating at like 10%. Mm. And that's just, this is how it, how it was. Cause I had so much stuff in the way. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I read in a book that prana is for life. And that if you're feeling all of this energy outside, if you're that receptive, then it's going to be flowing through you with your breath. And as long as you've got full receptivity to, to, this energy, this life force that we're now opened up to, you will live forever because it's always forever. And then I took San Pedro yeah. and uh, I asked San Pedro a similar thing. I was like, so what's, what's the deal with immortality? And it was like, oh, it's simple. You need to get rid of your thoughts. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like your body stores thoughts from your past, anything you're holding onto, any perception of yourself, uh, your worries, your doubts, your fears. And it's not even like negativity is what's fully aging us. It's the stockpiling of these thoughts. It said you need to let it all flow through you and out with the wind. And it creates a clean system. Kind of like water constantly going down a pipe, cleaning the inside of the pipe. And it's like, as long as you do that, you don't have to die. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I love that. How, 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 the question I want to ask you as well is how deep have you gone in the astral plane? Oh, I don't know. I mean, actually I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Very deep. <laughs> At one time I was bored and this interdimensional being showed up out of nowhere, literally just cracked like, like shattering glass, a window through time and space and brought me through. And he took me to the edge of the universe, essentially, which was this multidimensionally faceted place where I could see other dimensions all around me. I actually had to go through a portal that was created from many dimensions and as I'm walking through like this, this, uh, this, this, this moving picture of sorts of a tunnel, the beings are coming out from these individual scenes and walking with me. And then we get to the final space, which is like the edge of the universe. And there's this huge moving dictation of consciousness from the smallest level, like dirt and germs and stuff like that. And then up to like insects and worms and then animals and humans and then planets and stuff like that. And it was just showing me personally, it was like, I was taking my mind and putting me into this, this, this giant portrait of life and allowing me to experience different, different levels of consciousness. And then what it did was after that, 
it took, it, this being that was guiding me through this entire thing put its arm around me, just pulled me out of that painting and turned around and then showed me what else is there. You know, there's like this, this other thing, which I've never seen before, completely broke my brain. Beyond language. It's, it's of a different language. Like this universe, everyone can conceptualize this universe from what they've seen. So probably their friends have talked about DMT and other things like that and aliens. And, you know, we have a very limited scope because the way that we're making sense out of this universe, even parallel dimensions included, is through the media. You know, like Donnie Darko and Men in Black. And so when we really think about it, what we think we know about the world, even when it comes to source consciousness and all the beliefs throughout the religions, it's all within a box. Imagine if someone took you out of everything you know about spirituality and took and literally put you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And what you're now standing in front of is like another box with another bunch of things in there, which make no sense because it's got nothing to do with what we're in right now, mm. like this physical body. To them, a physical body is probably like six arms and like two, two spinal cords. And even then to them, they don't call it spine and they don't even, it doesn't even look like a spine. It's completely different, completely different. And their source consciousness in that box or their idea of the universe is completely warped. They probably don't even think of it like the universe. And so it's at that point practically impossible to figure out with what we know here, what that other e, well, whatever, whatever that is, is. And so it broke my brain because I was like, wait, there's two gods. Like there's two source consciousnesses. This is breathing and moving. I know that for sure, but in a completely different way. And then it was like, yeah. Uh huh. And I was like, all right, no one's going to believe this. And I came back home. <laughs> <laughs> I know the last time we, we, we talked about the conversation last time and you said about how because I mean that story to me straight away I'm thinking like oh I want to explore that I want to explore that myself but I remember last time as well like you talked about how after a while because you, you're somebody who's you've been doing this for a long time now and just like everything in life I think when you do a lot of stuff you, you get bored of certain facets of life it's just the nature of nature of what this is really I th sometimes I feel that um, and you said that sometimes that flying and going through walls and things like that after a while they do become boring and you want, it, you want something you want something more sort of say do you then, from that point, did you? Is it? Do you think it's key to sort of then, from that position, actually to turn turn inward on yourself and actually go within yourself with astral projection? Yeah. 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 Because you kind of have to, mm -hmm. in order to get to specific places, you need to have your consciousness at a certain level, and that's why when people pass on, depending on how much stuff they still need to sort through within their being, that will determine where they go, and then only once they realize certain things within that kind of testing ground do are they then elevated to another dimension because then when you have these epiphanies your mind changes so your frequency shifts so you become more mature and then you go to another dimension that matches it or at least one that's more suited to you yeah because i heard someone a while ago talking about how when with with astral projection obviously you'll know more that, more than this about me but I read a guy's book, I can't remember what it was called now, but I read a guy's book about astral projection anyway. And he was speaking about how when you perceive sort of astral projection, you see this, this sort of this vast amount of potential where you can you can travel all these different worlds and stuff like this. But he said that you actually neglect the fact that within inside of ourselves is like our 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 bodies themselves have a universe within them inside themselves. Like yeah. a like a co like you know the microcosm. Yeah. Like actually within inside ourselves. Have you experienced that? Do you think that this, that the, the body itself is actually infinite, has infinite potential? It's weird. Yeah. I, on DMT and on ayahuasca, I noticed this. Um, I'm just going to say what I saw. What I saw was inside our bodies are literally other dimensions, not just microverse, bacteria, stuff like that. You could eat a piece of cake. And it will get assimilated energetically through your energy bodies and then materialize themselves as rain in another dimension inside your body. It's just weird. And on, that was on ayahuasca. There was a bunch of creatures that were like, hey, it's raining. They, they didn't know anything that was happening. They didn't yeah. know they were inside the body. When I say creatures, I mean like right now we could be inside a person's body and we wouldn't know, like some type of entity. And it could be eating, it could be eating anything. 
but it's definitely not drinking water when it's raining it's probably eating something physical and it has no idea that it's being transformed in this way on dmt a complete portal opened up inside my body and i can see through my body and it's like looking down a volcano and beings were coming up and singing and making noises and chanting and uh, that got really weird because they would come up and out and then i would kind of lose all sense of myself <laughs> yeah i thought about that's a good point by the way because i've i've questioned that in my own life because you know like how we have we have in our, in our bodies now we have bacteria and stuff I mean, I've questioned that them as that bacteria. I mean, we know that obviously the latest studies now suggest that that bacteria in your body is actually sort of shaping your reality now. So it makes you choose certain decisions, what sort of um, foods to eat and things like that. And I've questioned if that's going on with inside ourselves. Is there something, are we, what are we embedded in that we don't understand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. But then from that position as well, you can also ask yourself is if you are, if you are in, embedded within something else, are you going to be sort of a good bacteria or a bad bacteria? <laughs> yeah. And affect the, and, and affect the host. <laughs> yeah. Like a virus at that point, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen that new, um, that TV series on Netflix, by the way, the, there's a new, there's a new series called rain. Have you, have you heard it or not? So basically it's a, it's a, it's a, it's really weird. Cause it's like, it's dubbed, it's German, I think, or Swedish, but it's dubbed in English. And anyway, the, in the documentary there, there's a virus where the, this, uh, basically the rain brings a virus to the people and the virus just to start spreading the virus across the people and stuff like that and uh it's funny because what i got from that the, the the documentary is that it was sort of like an analogy of consciousness to a sense of like because that's what sometimes feel like consciousness is doing it's sort of like if we are inside of something else and we're sort of the bacteria that's inside of something larger than ourselves that we're sort of we're them little bacteria that's going around spreading sort of positive you can positive or negative information and then you spread that on to someone else and then eventually the host becomes something even bigger and comes blossoms into something better i do feel like you have to watch that documentary yeah that mm. program really cool something else i want to ask you as well is, is um yeah that's what i want to ask you see if somebody i mean because a lot of people who listen to this podcast and things they're the people who are doing a lot of work the, the people who probably maybe they might not have but they might they, I, I do I get a sense that they, they do un, get an understand of what astral projection is and what lucid dreaming is and they're starting a, they're on this sort of journey of doing the work and things like that if someone who's in that position now and they, they're on they're sort of on the train sort of say and they're doing the work what do you think is the sort of the first step for them for exploring their consciousness now hmm good question It would depend on where they're at and what they want to do. I mean, the one thing that everyone has in common is once you start, it's like once you get on that roller coaster, it doesn't stop until it's finished. And so <laughs> if you yeah. start going in your mind <laughs> through meditation first instead of astral projection, eventually you're going to come around to astral projection and psychedelics and things like that. If you start off with astral projection and psychedelics, eventually you're going to go into your mind. It just this just depends on how comfortable you what, are. What with. about this is one I was thinking of. What about because a big one that I see a lot of people is is before you, when you start doing the work, you have to sort of um, re-examine your your belief systems. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> but be careful because if you do something too fast, you can go crazy. And craziness is just holding on to an old belief system and then freaking out because what you've now been presented with isn't making sense. It's not matching up is what you've been told in school. And a lot of people place a lot of value on their belief systems. So it feels like they're losing a lot of things. That's craziness. How, how do belief systems affect the astral plane? Mm, not much. I mean, it just limits what you're able to do as a person or well, as a consciousness. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people still walk in the astral plane where you can, you can teleport and fly and stuff. Yeah. But say if somebody's say if in astral plane, somebody's because obviously I know with psychedelics and stuff. If you're if you're in your mind, you're manifesting fear within a psychedelic. The, the psychedelics going to take you to, to, to that fear. Mm. Is that the same astral projection? If you if you're somebody who has so many fears in your mind, and you see if you're even if you're thinking of demons and hell and stuff like that, is that going to take is, is astral projection going to take you there? Dependent on your fears in your mind. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, a lot of beings like to feel your mind. They like to see. It's kind of like 
blood in the water to a shark. If you're afraid of things, you're going to attract a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to hell, there's an entire thought realm around the idea of hell. And if you believe you're supposed to be there, you will literally dematerialize and show up there. If you think you're a bad person, you're going there. Because you think you're a bad person. It's got nothing to do with whether or not you're a bad person. You're judging yourself at the end of the day. Inside our bodies are literally other dimensions. Right now, we could be inside a person's body.